Greetings to all of you. As a citizen and a lawyer, today I will be sharing about my ideas of power of law with you. But before that, I must tell you that as a child, I used to play several games and all those games had certain sets of rules. At that point of time, I could not realize as to who made those rules. But the only thing I understood was that all players are supposed to follow the rules to win the game. My curious mind keeps on thinking as to what may happen if I break those rules and lose the game. Why winning is important? What if all the players went together? Why the society puts too much pressure on competition and not on cooperation? Or in this game, focusing on obedience to rules rather than teaching the child to question her surroundings? As I grew up, I realized that rules are everyday realities in the life and that we all are surrounded by the laws. Beginning from birth, when one requires a birth certificate to obtaining a passport or even a house, everything is being regulated by the state. Law decides at what age a person may marry or could vote. Roads, markets, workplace, including the cyberspace, uh, is governed by a set of laws. Law is being intermeshed with our daily lives. It remains invisible, but it is there. Law determines what actions may be categorized as criminal and what punishment may be imposed. Um, law um, uh, has power to end oppression. Law empowers people with certain sets of basic rights to entitle them to have a dignified life. People repose faith in the legal system with the belief that law will enable justice. But when I entered the law cult, I learned about the technicalities of the law with which I could hardly relate. Law schools and universities teach you the abstract the, uh, laws, the theories, the principles, and the rules to obey rules. The legal text is written in complicated, technical, and formal format. The language of law I learned was intimidating. There was a cloak of mystique surrounding the law and the legal system. Uh, it was difficult for me then to understand as to why law is written in such a complicated language when it is applicable to all and is being used by everyone. And above all, there is a principle which says that ignorance of law is not an excuse. Further, when I entered the courts to practice law, I found that lawyers and judges, while interpreting and enforcing the law, use formal and complicated ways that are shrouded in technicalities. Hence, the system operates in a way that it becomes a threat for a common person. Instead of making justice a reality for everyone, the legal machinery consisting of police and other agencies use threat and fear and have made law difficult for an ordinary person. The way the system works, it is seen as coercive and repressive as it takes humanity out in the process. Though the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 16.3 commits all member states to ensure equal access to justice for all, in practice, these promises are not being enforced. Studies recognize that the global justice gap exists. Globally, more than 5 billion people or two-thirds of the population are deprived of justice for their immediate problems as well as for their severe needs. The question therefore is that why the governments are not spending resources on legal literacy or strengthening the system to make it people friendly. Is it because once people are aware, they will question the authorities and will demand accountability from the state or perhaps the ignore, ignorance of law prevails because our leaders have failed to see law as a public good. Or maybe law has been monopolized by the few privileged and the powerful when it is impacting the lives of all. In fact, today, law is merely being reduced to an idea of winning the case rather than thinking of law as a tool to achieve the dream of justice for all. Moreover, the legal system does not exist in vacuum. It mirrors the biases that exist in society. The way the system operates, it reinforces discrimination rather than addressing the structural inequities. Feminist says that law is patriarchal and use the male reasoning. Scholars have demonstrated that law is a subversive site. 
Other says that law is being weaponized by the authoritarian states to stifle dissent. There are gaps between the law as it exists on paper and the way it is being implemented on the ground, which I am calling as operational gaps. Yet, despite of all the problems, law is a site of resistance to translate justice into reality and to demand rights. I say this because I see the other side of law and I am hopeful that law will be used to shape the idea of justice. This may be because I have learned law more on the grounds when I interacted with people on the street. I have talked to women survivors of violence, workers and other marginalized groups and by participating in the social movements. In all the situations, I try to understand how laws are being made, implemented, monitored, transgressed, and are being remade by the ordinary people who continuously interact with the state and use the law to, to conduct social order. People have used law to demand accountability from their elected representatives. In India, there are many examples of how people's rights have been legitimized after the long democratic nonviolent struggles. The civil disobedience movement, the workers' movement, the women's movement, and other citizens' movement during the colonial era, as well as in the post-colonial nation, show how power of law is being used to foster the democratic ideas. For instance, the right to information uh, law or the RTI Act as we know it, it was imagined not in the boardrooms or in the courtrooms, but it is when people in the small village in Rajasthan demanded the accountability from the government and, and raised the slogan, Hamara Paisa Hamara Hisa, our money, we demand account. Similarly, it is after the long struggle that the right to food uh, was legalized as the National Food Security Act in 2013 when slogans were raised about starving bellies and overflowing godams, who get paid bhare godam. The right to livelihood uh, and social security as embodied in the National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, the Right to Education Act, the Domestic Violence Law, the Amendment in the Rape Laws, and many other laws have evolved because common men and women demanded their legitimate rights. These struggles are about individual rights as well as about the collective rights. These struggles show that law is being used to demand right to life, to survive with dignity. These struggles against ex exploitation are inspiring where ordinary people are overcoming challenges by educating, organizing and agitating. Law is being used by the marginalized to fight for their jal, jungle and zameen water, forest, and land using the language of rights. These struggle breathes life into the rigid laws where people challenge the state to fulfill its constitutional obligations. These struggles show that by excluding the marginalized, no nation can progress. These struggles show that if the state fails to fulfill its duty, then people are being compelled to take action to remind the state that it has to perform. These struggles taught me the real meaning of the word like democracy, equality, social justice, and liberty as enshrined in the preamble of the Constitution of India. One needs to put the different stories together to see how power of law has been used to make multiple imaginations a reality. In the battle between the exercise of rights and exercise of power, all these movements expanded the scope of justice to include its multiple dimensions that may be restorative, rehabilitative, or distributive. It is while working on the ground, I learned that to obtain and to sustain freedom, what is required is a continuous struggle at multiple sites. Multiple problems need multiple imaginations. In a country that has numerous laws but limited rights, these examples show that beyond asserting their right to vote periodically, Ordinary people have to constantly vigil their rights as proactive citizens. These struggles show that by using the power of law, ordinary people need to engage with the state on equal terms to transform the society. 
these struggles show that despite being denied voices, those who are dispossessed are fighting against the powerful using law to engineer social change. Through this grassroots struggles, I learned that law exists not only in the courtrooms or in the law books. Law is not an abstract notion that is owned only by the lawyers, judges, or police. It is a living reality that belongs to all, including the most vulnerable. I learned that a new legal culture is created within and outside the courtroom when people use law to make participatory democracy viable. Of course, it is essential to follow certain principles such as supremacy of law, equality and non-discrimination, fairness and accountability, transparency and expanding the outreach of law, independence of judiciary, avoidance of arbitrary and unjust laws, and so on. In short, the power of law should not rest with a handful of people. History shows that autocratic leaders have used coercive and unjust laws to generate fear and to exert control. From the experience of Holocaust to the colonial rule, all show that law has been used by the autocratic states uh, to promote war, genocides, and other problems. Yet, at the same time, the civil disobedience movement and the democratic social movements all over have been started by the common people asking the lawmakers and enforcers to behave responsibly. Therefore, the relationship between uh, the law, the state, and the citizen is fraught with contradiction. I learned that power of law needs to be checked so that those who make or enforce the law should not become more powerful than the law itself. Coming back to the question I have been thinking, since my childhood, when I compared the rules of game children play to the complex legal system, I find that society focuses too much on competition and the state authorities wanted us to think of law in a unidimensional ways when we can imagine law in multiple and diverse ways. This operational gap can be reduced when the society together initiates a dialogue on law, rights, and justice among all sections of society in a simple language. Once people realize the power of law, reclaim it, and takes its ownership to use it responsibly, law may not only deliver justice, but it may transform the society. So the idea is to demand a system which is right-based, simple, inclusive, and where everyone could participate to shape the law. The idea is to take law from the courtrooms to the communities to make justice a priority. We all need to uh, use the power of law creatively to imagine the right to justice for all through the revolution, consisting not of arms, but through the revolution of ideas, using law in compassionate and practical ways to create a better, just, and a fairer world. Thank you.